you guys, I filmed this video already, literally just now, 12 minutes of raw footage, and I didn't turn the mic on. So I just played the video back and there's zero sound. I'm literally so upset because I felt like that was such a good video and now I have to do it again. Oh man, bear with me. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. I am definitely feeling like I'm on my, like, oh my God, like, Vibes. I don't know. I really like this shirt and this outfit. <laughs> Before I get into this video, make sure you guys pre-order it just because I filmed this video already and I have to film it again and I'm really sad. So I'll be really happy if you guys pre-order my book, The Prepared Graduate. It drops January 25th. It's not just for college students or grad students. It's for anybody who wants to learn how to be a savage in their career. Today is the last episode of our Regulatory Explained series. I've had so much fun filming this series. If you haven't seen episodes one, two, three, and four, what are you even doing? run it back, press pause, open a new tab, and go watch those episodes. Today, we are gonna be talking about module three. In the last episode, I covered ECTD structure and modules one, two, three, four, and five, and I wanted to take a moment to really focus on module three because I think it's really important for people to understand it. And also, it's kind of the easiest section to break down compared to all the other modules. So, module three, which also people refer to as the CMC section. CMC stands for Chemistry Manufacturing and Controls. If you haven't seen any of my previous regulatory videos, go and check those out, because I do touch on CMC every now and then. I have worked a CMC regulatory affairs job before, so I'll talk more about my experience a little bit more at the end of this video. So module three is the quality section. That's what people will call it. And it's broken down into almost like two parts, and I'm gonna kind of cover the parts and then go back to them and, and speak to it as we discuss. So there's module three, and then there's three two, which is the subsection of module three. Three two is quality. So then there's three two S, which is drug substance. And a lot of times you'll see the DS, people will be like, oh, DSDP. DS just stands for drug substance, DP is just drug product. And the way I like to see drug substance is like drug substance A, B, C. If you do A plus B plus C equals drug product. So drug substance is what makes up your drug product, is how I like to see it, or your substance make up your product. So in 3-2-S, which is drug substance, you're gonna see a bunch of subsections and that's where all your documents will go. There'll be a little bit of overlap between 3-2-S and 3-2-P and I'll make sure to cover that as we move on to 3-2-P. So in 3-2-S, some of the information that you might submit to the FDA or your health authority, the FDA, cause yeah. But some of the documents you might submit are gonna be general information, which is one of the subsections, I believe that's 3-2-S-1 and then 3-2-S-2 is gonna be manufacturing information. 3-2-S-3 is gonna be characterization of your drug substance. So that might be impurities. You would discuss impurities within that section. 3-2-S-4 is going to be control of drug substance. So you would put information there like about your batch analysis. 3-2-S-5 is reference standards and materials. 3-2-S-6 is container closure, I believe. 3-2-S-7 is reference standards and materials. And then the last one is stability. Don't quote me on the numbers. The fact that I can even remember it is quite insane, but that is some of the information that you're going to get. I wanted to take a step back and talk about stability. Stability is essentially, you know, the conditions in which that drug substance can remain without degradation. So if you see a lot of the times, and I'll cover this in drug product as well, but if you see a lot of times on like a pamphlet that you get or a label that you get for a drug, it'll say storing conditions below like 75 degrees Celsius. Where do you think that information comes from? 75 degrees degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Where do you think that information comes from? It comes from stability data, stability studies, stability information, and all of that would go in the stability section for drug substance or drug product, whatever it is. Then going back up one to container closure and systems. Sometimes people hear container closure and they kind of get a little confused, so I just want to break it down. But container closure system refers to the sum of packaging components that together protect the dosage form of your product. Product. So an example of a container would be a vial or a bottle, and then the example of a closure would be a screw cap or a stopper. So it's not that confusing, but container closure is very important, especially in drug 
favorite product. So, I know I went all over the place a little bit with 32S, but now we're gonna move into 32P and I'm gonna break down some of the sections you might see within 32P drug product. You're gonna see some overlap, as I mentioned, with 32S, but there actually are a few differences. In 32P1, that's where you're gonna put the description and kind of an overview of your drug product. In 32P2, you're gonna put information about the pharmaceutical development. In 32P3, that's where you'll put manufacturing information as you did for uh, 32S, you put manufacturing information for 32S as well. Then in 32P4, this is a little bit different. You don't have this in the substance section, but you're gonna put information about control of excipients. And then you're gonna put the name for the excipients in the headline. Of course, RegOps Publishing will do all that when they're building the backbone. But just for you to understand, control of excipients goes in that section for drug product. Now, what is an excipient, you might be wondering. An excipient is an inactive substance that acts as a vehicle or a medium for a drug product or an active substance. Now, moving on to the next section, 32P5. That's where you're gonna put information about control of your drug product. 32P6 is where you're gonna put reference standards information, and then the next section is gonna be container closure as we did for drug substance, and then the last section after that is going to be stability data. So see, that wasn't so bad. After that, you're gonna have 32A, which is appendices, and then you're gonna have 32R, which is regional information, and then I believe 3.3 is literature references. Of course, the best way to verify this information is to go on the FDA's website and look at their ECTD TOC and go to module three. I may have mixed up some of the sections of 3.2S2 or 3.2S3 for certain um, subsections, so make sure you're not watching this video and then going and doing a submission. Make sure you actually check where you put information for container closure, where you put the regional information, where you put information for control of excipients in the right subsection because that one, two, three, four that comes after the three, two P is actually very important. That's the general overview of module three. As I said at the beginning of this video, I kind of wanted to touch on my CMC experience. I think it's really important for people who are breaking into regulatory to not close the door on any opportunity. My second regulatory job was actually a CMC job. Now I'm not crazy about chemistry manufacturing and controls like at all, but if you're interested in quality control, you're interested in quality assurance, manufacturing or you're a really big chemistry person I kind of feel like a CMC regulatory affairs job would be really great for you and if you try it and you end up deciding that you absolutely hate it and it's so boring and repetitive that's what happened to me then you can just pivot but having that experience in CMC is going to be absolutely key for you to evolve in regulatory I may not know everything in module 3 or I may not know everything in regulatory at all but what I can attest to is that having experiences in different areas of regulatory has really helped me evolve as a professional and be able to make videos like this. The last thing I wanna say about CMC is that if you're working in regenerative medicine and cellular therapy, it is so interesting. All the questions during the review process of your application that you get from the FDA, nine times out of 10 are going to be a CMC related question, a manufacturing question, a control question, a safety question as it relates to the manufacturing process because regenerative medicine and cell therapy is so variable and actually it can be be, the toxicity level, I believe, can be quite toxic for certain patients. So I think that it's extremely interesting. And as a regulatory person, as a strategist, working on a regenerative medicine project or a cell therapy product, stem cells, whatever, you kind of have to know a lot about CMC because when you're doing your RTQs or what we say, response to queries, response to questions received from the FDA during your review process or any other health authority, it helps to have that CMC knowledge and background to respond to those very difficult questions. Of course, you're always gonna have CMC there with you to answer those questions, but I think, yeah, I think regulatory strategists who work in cell therapy can literally do anything in CMC just because of the exposure they get working on those type of applications. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video came out just as good as when I first recorded it, so that's a good thing. I would love to do another Regulatory Affairs Explain series. If you guys just explain to me what you wanna learn more about, put those comments down below. I really enjoyed doing the research for this series and just making it in general. It's kind of just like taking thoughts in my head and spewing them out at you. So of course, I hope you found this beneficial, but if there's anything specific that you want to learn or there's things at work that you're learning that you're kind of confused and you want to learn more about, I'd be happy, 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 happy to make that video. As a last note, make sure you pre-order my book, The Prepared Graduate. It drops January 25th. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, bye.